What I've done here is prepared the 60 meter target board. And no matter which caliber you use, be it 177, 22, or 25, you're going to need a big target board. And the reason is, whatever your point of aim is, in this case, this blue dot here I've drawn, which is about the size of a five pence piece, uh, will be totally different to where your point of impact will be. And in this case, it's going to be somewhere down here. Usually, when I calibrate this rifle at this range and do this method, it's round about between 25 and 26 centimeter drop. Uh, is the mean point of uh, the actual group. So I'm expecting it to drop somewhere around down here. There is a little bit of a breeze and it is blowing uh, from where the target will be from the left to the right. So I expect uh, the impact may be slightly to the right of this line going down what I've drawn. But we'll see. Right, I put the target board up now. It's at the 60 meter point and there's a safe uh, brick backstop behind it. I'll try and get the laser onto the camera and laser target for you. You see it's at 60 meters. Now I can feel this breeze now blowing still so it is going to have an effect on the group but as long as we can get them um, roughly in the same area we'll be able to work out the data. I'm shooting off the bipod and I'm resting on a piece of card because obviously it has been raining and the floor's wet. That's two. And that's three. Now, hopefully you can see on the camera, I can just see through the scope that they've fallen right of the ladder or the line going down, as I said, and they're quite tight to say there's a breeze. So what I'll do now is I'll zoom all the way back out uh, and then we'll pause the camera, walk up to the target uh, and then we'll have a look, see what sort of group we've produced in this wind at this range. Well here we are then at the 60 meter point, if I zoom in, you can see there's the group. Now, if I use my uh, pen which is over here, you can see there's three shots here which has hit the board just right of the line as I said and this is the breeze which I can feel now. Taking these three shots into consideration the centre point is probably going to be where I'm drawing the circle now. Just out of interest, the two furthest parts are here to here, and obviously this is in a breeze, and you can see that that is just over, and it's only just over one inch uh, in diameter. In fact, the one inch point is actually the start of the pellet hole. Uh, these two here, less than a centimetre and a quarter apart and these two are two centimetres so that's not bad at all for 60 metres this one here was more like a wobble but what I'm going to do now is try to keep it as straight as possible which is hard when you're looking to one side then I'm going to draw a line like I have just come over to the camera like so and zoom out, come to this side and I'm going to measure from the centre of the group or the aim point down the line and then, excuse me if my head's in the way, 25.2 so it's 25.2 25 25.2 centimetres drop and this information I'll use in the Chagun Pro software in a little while. 
Right, I'm back down at the rifle end now and what I intend to do now is calibrate my mill dots for this range on the three magnifications I've been using which is 3, 5 and 10. As I'm on 10 already I'm going to put the crosshair on the point of aim uh, and then see where the mean of the group is in relationship to the crosshair. That's four and a quarter over. I'll now go down to times five. Times five is two and a quarter over. And lastly, times three. And times three is one and a half mill dots over and the reason I can see it on times three is because the optics in this orc sidewinder is very good and it allows me to be able to see that far. Right I've moved now to a slightly different location with the wind directly behind me going towards the target. Uh, I'll try and get the laser onto the camera and laser the door there you can see it's saying 61 meters. I'm going to zoom in and you can see there, slightly adjust the legs again, the coke bottle top on top of the stick. And that's what I'm going to be aiming at. Four and a quarter mil dots of old over. And there you go. First shot. As you witnessed, small coke bottle top no problem whatsoever for this rifle at that range and that just proves how good the calibration is right, I've got the camera now on its tripod and I'm filming actually the screen of my home computer I know when I edit this it's going to be clear enough to see I will talk through it though as we go along so you'll get the general gist now I've opened up the Chair Gun Pro and I'm going to do this as quickly as possible to uh, save uh, on the length of the video and it's opened up automatically in a 2.2 calibre profile. Because we're using 177 today, I'm going to move the mouse over to the red tab and click, which automatically changes it to a 177 calibre profile. You can see it's saying 177, so we know we're correct, and it's saying the weight of the pellet that the computer's picked is 0.544 gram, or if you keep the mouse over the box, it's telling you it's 8.40 grain, which RWS Superfield are, so happy with that. Move one across now, and this is the ballistic coefficient of the pellet, and the, the standard one is 0 0.0210. Now we want that to be exactly correct for our combo with our pellet, so right click in the box and press the bottom button here, which is calculate uh, ballistic coefficient from point of impact difference. So I'll click on that, and a new box has opened up. I'm just going to try zooming in without losing focus on the screen, like so. Right, we know that the muzzle velocity, which is this box here, of our rifle after we chronographed today is 781.81 feet per second. That equates to 238.1 meters per second. So 238 is correct. Scope height, we worked it out at being 4.6 centimeters. So we'll put 4.6 and we zeroed at 25 meters. We, we, the target range, the furthest we were shooting at was 60 meters, so we're putting 60 meters there. And we knew at 60 meters the pellet dropped minus 25.2 centimeters. So put that in there and press enter. And you can see now, it, computers worked out the ballistic coefficient for your pellet of 0 0.0143. It then asks you if you want to accept that just here, so you press accept. And what it does then, it automatically adds that to the top column where it says ballistic coefficient just here it now says 0 0.0143 going across there's muzzle velocity as we've already said 238.1 which equates if you keep the mouse over to 781.8 which is what we worked it out as next one is zero range 25 meters you put in there and scope height is this one. We know it was 4.6 centimeters, so we put 4.6 in and enter. And you can see things are starting to change now. 
energy we know it was 11.40 which if I put my finger over on the mouse it's telling me 11.40 so we know that's correct nothing here we need to change check the magnification is what you used which is times 10 here which it is and then the range we're looking out to is 60 meters so where it says 40 there I'm just going to type in 60 and press enter and you can see the graph starting to move what I want to display now is a table as well so I go into display and press both table and graph and it opens up now I'm just going to spin the camera slightly and zoom in because it's the graph and table we're interested in but more the table now we know that we're on times 10 magnification and we know that from a 25 meter zero out to 60 meters we worked out uh, the pellet dropping four and a quarter mil dots if I now look at the 60 meter point which is here and move across to where it says mil dots you can see it's saying minus 4.18 mil dots so four, four and a quarter just about which is what I read it this actual software is going to be more accurate than I read it at distance so you can see that's correct we also knew that at five meters I said it was where the thick post on the scope uh, met the, met the uh, impact and that's at five mil dots so if you come up now to five meters and move across you can see it's five mil dots so we know it's exactly correct the data we've entered with what we actually shot which is what we actually want I'm now going to change the magnification uh, in the top right hand box here and put it from 10 to 5 so I'll click 5 and press enter and you can see the numbers have changed uh, 60 meters on times 5 magnification we said it was two and a quarter mil dots so 60 meters times 5 magnification 2.09 almost uh, two and a quarter now I'm saying almost because it's easier to read the closer distances than the, than the far distances so if I go up to the close distance which is five meters and I read that if you remember at two and a half mil dots because it's easier to read close and look what it says minus two and a half mil dots so you can see two magnifications now at four different ranges and it's exactly correct so what I'm saying is now all this data in here is all correct so at the minute because I'm on times 5 magnification looking down here look in 5 meter intervals 510 all the way down to, f to 60 meters you just look at this graph here and it tells you exactly how many mil dots you have to aim off uh, to hit the target at that range and because the 5 meter range was correct with what the actual rifle did and the 60 meter range was anything in between is also going to be correct so this is our me and Davey uh, work out our old over points uh, when, and get, allow us to shoot at so far ranges uh, with our sub 12 foot pound rifles it works with Art Hawk scopes and any generic mill dot MTC Mamba like Davey uses a lot it don't really work with but Davey has got a Hawk varmint and that works really well so if you use this method you are guaranteed really accurate aim points all the way along your trajectory Have a good calibration there. Very humane headshot, and it came straight down. I'll just zoom out and show you the distance to this. And this was in the wind as well. There you go.